Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be creating this gorgeous little monster in my Dina Wakely um, journal. And it's based on a piece of art by James Luke Burke Creative, JLB Creative. Um, he did one of these pieces on his um, latest Patreon go. And I just loved the simple shape of it and just the beautiful colours. So you can see it's just a fairly simple shape. It's um, a semicircle with two leaf shapes coming out for ears, the big round eye, and just a really simple body shape. Now I already had this page painted in my journal. Um, and it's painted on a canvas page, which ended up being really interesting because I love the texture of it. And one of the techniques that James used in his making of this was using um, distressed crayons which I have got some of and I really haven't used them all that much I barely used them at all actually so this is a really great push to use some materials that I hadn't used before um, in a different way so I'm just going in and blocking out my shape with some lime color now the colours I've used in this are very similar to the colours he used in his original piece, again because I just loved it so much that I wanted to try and replicate it in some way in my own journal. Um, greens are not colours I tend to use very often, but I, she says looking at the other page, <laughs> but that other page is quite unusual too. Um, but. I, I do admire when people can actually use colours like greens and purples because they're, they're two colours I don't use very often in my, my work but when it's used well they look really really effective. So you can see me just going over and moving the paint around. So I'm using the Dina Wakely paints and I've used lime, evergreen, I think I've got some aloe there. And you'll notice when I'm working on the canvas, when I wet my brush um, and work over the canvas it's sort of pales down the colour again which is where I'm getting that interesting texture from. Now when he did his piece of artwork he mixed watercolours and acrylics and the distressed crayons and a few other bits and pieces um, to get his his effects. On this I'm using mostly acrylics and obviously the distressed crayons and the colours that you can see. So I'm just going back in and adding some white and I'm blending it. Now you saw me use my heat gun on this or my heat tool on this because it's on canvas it retains a lot of moisture so you actually have to heat it for quite a while to get it dry which gives you a beautiful working time when you're blending colors so you can see even though I used the heat gun somewhat it was still wet enough or the paint was wet enough on the canvas that I could go back in and rework that lighter color into the canvas to mix it with the other colors there I'm just using a wet wipe to wipe that in as well. And now all I'm doing is adding some of the distress crayons. So I'm adding them in, starting off with the darkest colour first, and then just blending them in with my finger. Again, because the canvas has retained moisture, it's very easy to blend on this, but you did see me at one stage dip my finger in some water to help blend it out a little bit more. And now I'm going in with the mint colour again to add in some extra detail and add in some of that sh um, shading, I suppose, the, the light source which is coming from the front. So this is a, a lot of experimenting, I suppose, with different um, materials that I hadn't used before and I certainly hadn't used it on the canvas before. So it's nice to use something different, I suppose, in my little arsenal of all the stuff that I have. To get the white onto the page, I decided to use a white um, paint pen rather than just painting in with uh, white paint. And the reason for that is just I find the paint pens really convenient for doing small little areas like that. You've got a little bit more control and you can go back and reapply if it's not dark enough. So now I'm just going in with a darker blue again to add some shading and some depth to the page. And you can see me sort of going off the edge. What I forgot to say at the very beginning was the pencil that I used to sketch this out was actually a blue Stabilo All pencil. So if you follow my channel for a while, you know, know I'm a big advocate for the black one. Um, but I've actually got some of the different colours now. And I just find, particularly if I'm sketching, I love sketching with a water-soluble pencil because if I don't like the line, I can erase it. And particularly in this piece, that by using the blue pencil I could kind of blend it into the paint 
and get that beautiful little bit of shading that isn't a really harsh dark line um, but just gave that little bit of extra colour. So now I'm just going in with a darker um, green colour to blend in and just get that um, shading happening and I was really enjoying the way that these crayons were blending on the page. It was just a joy to use and hopefully in the close-up at the end you'll actually see the texture on the page too but because the um, canvas has got a texture the crayons sort of sit over the top of it so you've got these little grooves and a little bit of you can see the acrylic paint from behind sort of coming up through so you get those little extra pops of light source through and it just um, really added to the entire page. I don't think this page would have looked as interesting if I'd done it purely in acrylic paint. I think it got that beautiful texture and, and colour and interest from having those mixed medias on the page, which is one of the reasons why I love doing mixed media so much. So I'm just going in with a white paint pen to add a little bit of, again, those really bright highlights over the top. And now I'm going into the background and just adding some interest to that. Now, I ended up really liking how this turned out, but when I did that, I thought, oh, you've just ruined it. The reason I did that is when James is doing his painting, he actually had his brayer out and was brayering white paint and lighter colored paint over the surface, again, using something different to um, apply texture to his page. So, I decided to be brave and do that and I quite like how it turned out. It just gave again a bit more interest to the background. So now because I was a bit heavy handed, particularly up in the top left hand corner, I'm just going back in with a little bit more blue just to sort of blend it into the page again. But you sort of get that grainy bits and pieces. I ended up drying off my brush a little bit so it was more dry brushed on rather than the really wet which again was what happened in the top left hand corner. I probably spread it out a little bit too much. So I'm just going back in with my Distress Crayon just to add that little bit of extra detail to the edge and again blend in that background that I've just done. Um, blend off the edges so it sort of fits in a little bit more. The other thing that I really liked about that page is where I went and put some of the blue on the white to have the reflection from the iris. Usually when I'm doing eyes they're usually pure white with a little bit of colour um, but I found just having that little bit of blue on the eye sort of made it look, I suppose, more 3D, th more three-dimensional, and it sort of came up really well. This is the black Sibilla all pencil, I think it might be the blue. I'm just going back in and just adding a little bit of highlight over the top. I was finding it, however, because I had so much crayon on the page and so much acrylic paint, it was just finding it a little bit hard to get any tooth to actually draw on the page so you can see me sort of scraping off some of it. I tried using the pencil wet to see if that would help a little bit um, but there was probably a little bit too much crayon on the page for it to really sort of get as much grip as it needed to but it still gave me some depth particularly at the back of the head. So when I'd finished this I was looking at it, I really loved it just the way it is, but I knew I probably need to finish it off in some way, shape or form. So first thing I did was actually dry the page and try and dry it completely. You can see me touching the page just to see if the dampness had gone out of the page because I wanted to write over the background with my Stabilo All Pencil again. And again, I'm using the blue Stabilo All Pencil. And I did go to Pinterest to try and look up a quote, but in the end I just decided to journal about the process I've been through and why I loved this image and why I wanted to recreate it in my own page. Um, and I suppose for me that's really important to have a reason to, to do something. This is directly inspired by his artwork. Um, he gets all credit for the design process of it. Um, but by doing it, I learned a lot and I suppose that's why, you know, there are, are all these creators out on YouTube and on Patreon and, and doing all these things and that's why I do it. You know, I don't mind if you 
copy my page completely from start to end that's great because hopefully you're learning some techniques as you're doing it and that's how I feel about it I know some people get really precious about it and I can understand because I put their heart and soul into a piece of artwork but um, James is kind of of the same opinion as me that he puts it out there for people to have a go at um, and I think that's really important that you do have those models and things that you can just go and have a go have a try at you know, after seeing him use those distressed crayons, I want to have a go at them and I know now that they're going to be part of my arsenal when I create in the future. There are things that have sat in my shelf for so long that I hadn't touched and just by seeing someone else use them, I thought, well, I'm going to have a go at that and see how they work and I fell in love with them. So hopefully, um, you'll have some different tools that you come across and think, oh yeah, I'm going to try that and, and fall in love with them as well. So to finish this off, I'm just going in with this quote. Now, you saw me playing around with the Dina Wakely tissue paper in white um, and sort of thinking about gluing it down the page. But in the end, I decided I was just going to hand write it myself onto the page. And I'm really glad I did because I think the tissue paper would have taken away from the beautiful texture and the background and the colours. Um, and having it all sit in the page as one piece really works. So here in the close-up you can really see the texture of that canvas coming through with the distressed crayons over the top and even with the pencil writing in the background you can see the texture. Thank you so much for watching me discover a new uh, material to use in my journals. Until next time, bye for now.